this video, we will be talking about assessing your live soil under the microscope. To begin with, you'll need a good microscope. Uh, your requirements include lenses that have both 400 and 40x total magnification. Now, if you look on the video here, you'll see that the lenses are marked 4 and 40. Uh, the reason is you've got to take into account the, the eyepiece lenses, which are 10x. So it's the total magnification on here is 40 and 400. Your microscope will also need an iris diaphragm and an Abbey condenser. These are extremely important for you to be able to see the soil life, because a lot of that soil life is clear, so you'll need shadowing in order to see them. So if you have a proper microscope, the first thing you need to do is uh, prepare a sample. Now to make a sample, you'll need a test tube with milliliters marked on it. Put in uh, about one milliliter of soil and then add enough distilled water to bring it up to five milliliters. So you have a five to one solution. Put the cover on here and shake it for 30 seconds. Now you don't want to do it too hard where you're going to smash the fungi, but you want to do it enough to remove any soil life off of the organic matter so you can see what's in there. Once you've shaken it for 30 seconds, you can take out one drop using a dropper. Uh, first let it settle a bit so you don't have any big chunks. Uh, if you put a big chunk on the slide, the slip cover won't sit properly. So let it sit for a minute. Uh, let it a little bit out into the test tube again, and then put a single drop onto your slide. And then cover that slide drop with a cover slip. And when you first start off looking at the life in the soil, you want to start at the 40x total magnification and start looking for nematodes. They're pretty obvious. They're usually on there squirming, and once you've seen one, you know what to look out for. Now know that all nematodes are not bad. In fact, most of them are very beneficial. They're, all nematodes can be grouped into one of four types. They are the bacteria-eating nematodes, fungal-eating nematodes, root-eating nematodes, and predatory nematodes. Now the way you identify each is, uh, we'll start with the bacteria eaters. They have a mouth. Uh, sometimes they even have prominent lips. So look for that mouth. If it has a mouth on the front there, then that's a bacteria eater. Now a fungal eating nematode doesn't have a mouth. It has what looks like a spear. If you look under the microscope, it just looks like a line. They use this spear to puncture the, the fungi and then they suck out the inside. These are actually good. They're not really killing the fungi totally, and uh, it just cycles nutrients. The third type of nematode is a root eating nematode. Now these guys are the bad guys. Now you identify these by looking at their mouth. They're very similar looking to the fungal nematodes, except they have a little bulb on the inside of that spear. This bulb is needed so that they can really push with their muscles hard into the root. A root is a lot harder than a, a fungi. So just look for that bulb at the end of the spear, and that's a root eating nematode. Now the fourth type of nematode is a predatory nematode. A predatory nematode has a very large mouth, but what's very characteristic about them is they have a tooth. And they use this tooth to hunt down and eat other nematodes. If you find a predatory nematode in a sample, did you know that you would get good, healthy soil? Because this uh, nematode only exists if you have a good supply of nematodes going around. Now, if you see something with a really big mouth, but there's no tooth, that is not a predatory. It has to have the tooth. Now, when you're looking in a microscope, these guys are wobbly, wiggly, they're really hard to see if they're moving. So there's a little trick you can do if you want to get a good look at the mouth so you can identify them. Just take a lighter and run it under the slide briefly, just for a few times. 
try that. If it if you put it under there and they're still moving, just do it again. Just do it until they stop. This will slow them down. They'll be very slow after this, after a few times. Now for the rest of the assessment, you will want to go up to 400x total magnification. The first thing you'll notice on almost every sample is uh, bacteria. They're very, very small, almost dots on the screen. If you look real close, you might see that they come in different shapes. There's spheres, there's rods, there's like little oblong tablets. But the thing is that they're very small. They are about one micrometer across. Sometimes they can be mistaken for a little clay granule. They're just that small. But you will see them moving around quite a bit. One of the things you'll be looking out for is fungi. Now you can identify a fungi because they look like almost like tubes under the microscope. You can tell it's a fungi because all along a single strand, it's going to be the same thickness. If you see something that looks like fungi, but it tapers down, that's not a fungi. Now, they could have branches on the fungi, and they don't necessarily have to be the same thickness as the original strand, but anything along a single strand will be the same thickness. Now, there's good fungi and bad fungi. Usually the way to tell if a fungi is a good one is it usually has one of three or all three of these characteristics. They are, can be greater than three micrometers thick. That's usually a sign of a good one. They have septa, which is like little walls separating along the branch. Those are usually a good sign. Or if it has a color, such as a brown or a tan versus a clear. Now, a good one doesn't have to have all these properties and a bad one might have some of these properties, but it's usually a good way to tell if you have good fungi or bad fungi. Now, one thing to note is by using a microscope this way, you cannot say if any of the fungi is a mycorrhizal fungi or not. In order to do that, you'll need a special stain and a special microscope. You just can't do it with uh, just a regular microscope. You can also notice that you'll see uh, fungi spores. Sometimes they're just a single round object, and other times they look like a collection of these objects. And these are uh, potential fungi in the, for the future. Now the next thing to look out for are the protozoa. Protozoa can be one of three groups, the amoebas, flagellates, ciliates. Now amoebas come in different forms just looks like a big blob and it moves very slow, puts out these little arms every which way. But you can also have what's called a testate amoeba. And what this is is an amoeba that's inside of a shell. A flagellate is a one-celled organism that has what looks like little whips coming out of it, like one, two, sometimes I've seen up to four. And they use these little whip things called flagella to move. And because they are using this for moving around, they kind of move kind of jerky. They're not very fast. They uh, bumble around, usually kind of on the smaller side. But then there's also what's called ciliates. Now the ciliates are sometimes called race car drivers. They can move really fast. Like if you look on in a microscope on, on a slide and then suddenly you see something zoom across without even getting a chance to see what it was, that's most likely a ciliate. They also move smoothly. They are covered with a whole bunch of hairs called cilia that help them move. So they, they're very smooth moving. Now, when you look at the, the protozoa, the amoebas and the flagellates are usually a sign of a good soil, whereas the ciliates are a sign of anaerobic conditions. Now, you can get you know, one or two ciliates on a slide and that's not too bad but when you start seeing a whole bunch of them then you've got a problem with your soil now for some reason new mexico and arizona has very few flagellates or naked amoeba it's almost always the testate amoeba uh, my guess is that this is because 
uh, the shell helps them survive in drought conditions. Now, when any of these guys go into stasis, they form what, what looks like a double ringed sphere. If you see these under the microscope, that usually means they're in stasis, they're hibernating. They could come back, they might not come back, depending on conditions. Now, you're going to find all sorts of other objects when you look under the microscope. You know, and I've been doing this for years, and there's still things that I cannot identify. However, there's a couple things I do want to point out because they're kind of fun and also the stuff that is kind of more common. Now, you're going to see sometimes um, what's called a microarthropod. They look like uh, a mite, a little tiny mite. I always find them cool because they move around. They look like little mini Godzillas walking through the soil. Uh, another common object you will find is uh, cellulose. Now, cellulose looks like springs, gigantic springs. Sometimes they're coiled tight and sometimes they're spring out. But that's all it is. It's just cellulose. So now that you've got an idea of all the different things you find under a microscope, uh, your question might be, well, how or what does a healthy soil look like? Now, a good way to, to describe it is when you put a drop of your solution on a slide, on average, that drop should have at least one beneficial nematode. That's for the whole entire slide. Like when I first start off, I usually put a drop on and go around and count how many nematodes I see at the 40x magnification. Next thing to look at is for, on average, in the field of view, and the field of view means what you see when you look through the uh, eyepieces. That, that's one single field of view. On average, a field of view should have at least one beneficial protozoa, like an amoeba or a flagellate. It should have one substantial size strand of fungi. And uh, you also want to be looking out for areas of what's light brown or yellow clusters of what looks like organic matter. And that's a sign of humic and fulvic acid, which is what you really want in your soil. Now, things to look out for on the bad side are, of course, root-eating nematodes. But you're also looking out for too many ciliates. You know, you can have one or two ciliates per slide, and you're not so bad. But when you start seeing dozens, you know that you're having problems in your soil, most likely anaerobic conditions. Now, you can get actual numbers using a microscope, such as how many micrograms per gram of fungi, how many micrograms per gram of bacteria, and then you can use that to get the ratio of fungi to bacteria. That's well beyond the scope of this video. That will take some training. Um, if you're looking at wanting to do that, um, I would recommend going to Dr. Ingham's website, soilfoodweb.com, and you can take some of her classes there. I'll teach you how to get those numbers. Work and Beauty is a 501c3 nonprofit based in West Central New Mexico. We operate on donations from people like you. Please consider donating money for our cause by either sending a check to our address listed here or through our website at workandbeauty.org. Thank you very much.